bawa settler berpitambangkang sekara seksama permohon grasi. For Mercedes Corby, this is the news she thought she would never get. And then it goes into the law. And in English that reads... Clemency has been granted on this day, the 15th of May 2012. Um, yeah, President of Public Indonesia, his name, Dr H. Saliso Bang Bang Nudiona. Yeah, this is the best news we've had, so. Well, for a 20 year prison sentence, I guess that makes a huge difference. Yeah, especially when she's already done eight years. Since 2004, Chappelle Corby has sat in Bali's Karobakan prison as a convicted drug dealer, her life slowly slipping away. Have you ever been frightened that you could lose Chappelle? Yes. Yep. When have you felt that? Uh, with her mental health. She became catatonic. I'd have to shower her, hand feed her, you know, she, she cut all her arms up and we were really worried she wasn't going to make it. So Chappelle is just here? Yep, she's literally just behind this wall. Um, if we started yelling out, she'd more than likely hear us. Mercedes is Chappelle Corby's sister and staunchest supporter. As she walks the prison perimeter, it really is a case of so near, yet so far. And it, I guess it occurs to you that there is just one wall between uh, you and her and freedom. Yeah. Chappelle Corby was 27 and embarking on a holiday with family and friends when she was arrested at Bali Airport on October the 8th, 2004. Inside the cover of her boogie board bag, customs officers discovered 4.2 kilos of marijuana. I don't know what it was, but I just thought it's, it's not. It's not. I didn't put it there. And as I you, closed you it, knew instantly it was. No, no. I just knew there was something there. And what, what worried you about that? Um, it's just an instant click. Oh my god. I've seen this kind of things in the movie, but I didn't know what it was at the time. I just knew that all I'd put in there was my boogie board and my flippers. These were drugs Chappelle could never explain. And from my first meeting with her shortly after her arrest, their drugs she's always denied were hers. You weren't just being naive and silly and thinking, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> no, no. Not if I can get the death penalty. Not if I can be in here for 20 years and never have a baby, never have a life. No way. Can you look at the Australian people and say, without a shadow of doubt, you are innocent? I am innocent. This would be the beginning of an extraordinary saga. Would you like to follow? I wish you would. One that would polarise public opinion and fuel a media frenzy. Why do you think Chappelle became such a big story? What was it, do you think, about your sister? Um, a lot of people come to Bali, a lot of people love Bali. I just think it was a bit of shock. She struck a chord, though. Is it because she yeah. was the quintessential Australian girl? Yeah, she definitely struck a chord. She could have been your sister, your daughter, your friend, just going on holiday, and this is what happened to her. In May 2005, before a packed court, Indonesian judges found Chappelle guilty. A shell-shocked Chappelle was dragged off to prison to serve 20 years behind bars. Her family was devastated. 20 years? You know they took not one of our witnesses? I know. Not one? Did you ever ask Chappelle are you guilty? No, I haven't. She has told me I, I didn't do this, so I've never had to ask. It's There's no part of you that's ever going to reconcile yourself with Chappelle being guilty? No, never. If, if there was anything, if I thought my sister was guilty, I would never have given up my life as I have to 
defend her, put myself out there to be put down, you know, my children, everybody's, but it's because we, we know. Mercedes led a relentless campaign to clear her sister's name. But it wasn't long before she found she was not only having to defend Chappelle, but the entire Corby family. In all of this, it wasn't just Chappelle who was sentenced, was it? No. But you've all been convicted. Yes, you're all drug dealers now. We're all drug dealers, we're all drug addicts. So the rumours and the lies and the innuendo say. Yes, I mean, you, your husband, <laughs> your brothers, your father. Our father who has passed away. You've all been accused of being in the drug world. Yep, every single one of us. And for the record, you're not. None of us are drug smugglers. We're not in the drug trade and we stand by that. But as a convicted drug smuggler, Chappelle Corby had no choice but to come to terms with the brutal reality of prison life. What is it like inside that prison? What is it like inside her cell? It's crowded. It's pretty much just a room with mattresses on the floor and a, and a squat toilet with a bucket to shower in. No privacy? No privacy. No privacy at all. How many people in there? She has anywhere between 10 and 15 girls in her room. I think there's around 10 or 11 now. In her actual cell? Yep. <laughs> right from the day of her arrest, Chappelle always questioned whether she could survive years in prison. Can you believe it? No. No, I can't. All I can do is try to adapt as, as best I can and try to keep healthy. The, the prosecutors are, are actually at the point now to decide whether it's um, 20 years or life. <laughs> 20 years of life? <laughs> Which to me, it's like, what's the use of me trying to survive these days anyway? If life's what, even 20 years. You couldn't do that? For my family, I could. For myself, what's the use? I'll be like 50 by the time I get out and I'd never be married, never have children. I told him I won't come out for a photo with the cameras. Three years into her sentence, and it was clear Chappelle was struggling. The former beautician who took pride in her appearance no longer seemed to care. What was the first sign to you that something wasn't right? She started getting uh, more agitated. She'd always been quite calm w with us, but she started becoming agitated and letting herself go. Look, I still haven't bloody come to grips with love. Mercedes says the death of their father in 2008 seemed to push Chappelle to the edge. When it was at its worst, how bad did it get? She couldn't speak. Uh, she couldn't walk. I was let into the prison to bathe her, hand feed her, and the only noise we would get from her was a... Uh, uh, because she, she just couldn't speak. Do you think that that's because she, she was a broken woman? Definitely. She was not in control at all. She didn't even know who I was. And when she cut herself, was, was that a form of expression or do you think she tried to commit suicide? I actually think that was a cry for help. Yeah, she had voices, seeing things. She had a, made a whole new world in her head. In her head, I lived in a little hut on the um, perimeter of the jail and our mother was a chef there. Um, children lived in the bottom of the toilet in a dungeon. She realised that she was still in jail? No, she didn't really know. Chappelle is now on heavy doses of medication, delivered along with other essentials by Mercedes. Thank you. Um, we've got antidepressants, antipsychotic, um, and there's mood stabilisers. So. Her mental health is basically in your hands. This has really helped her. And um, 
you know, now that we have the doses right, the medication right, she, she, you know, she has a da bad days, but she's definitely more stable than she ever has been. It must irritate you when you uh, read that people believe that she's faking it. Uh, it more than irritate, it makes me so angry and upset. You know, they're, they're just obviously you know, ignorant people. The other tonic for Chappelle's mental well-being has been her Balinese boyfriend, Ben, whom she met in prison. You know, they, they can't do things that other boyfriend and girlfriends do, but he definitely supports her, um, visits her when he can, once, once or twice every fortnight, but he's there, supports her, and it makes her happy, you know, and she, she loves to, to have people visit, so, yeah, we're definitely grateful for him. Is it a serious relationship, do you think? Well, it's hard, you know, she's in prison, he's not. And with her current mental health and how it has been for these years, it's it's hard to know, you know, what's going to happen. Mm. He, he understands she's mentally ill. Oh, he definitely understands. It's also believed Chappelle's mental health played a role in the president's decision to grant her clemency, reducing her sentence by five years. It's still unclear when Chappelle will be released. It could be as early as August this year or as late as 2015. What is clear is that the young Australian woman who went into this prison eight years ago will be a vastly different person when she gets out. It's going to take a long time for her to recover if she ever does. She has to relearn. She's definitely become quite institutionalised. I've had to explain what Facebook is or um, Wi-Fi, um, just things that we don't get. You know, she, she hasn't watched TV for eight years. She hasn't touched a computer. The world has passed her by? Definitely, the world has passed her by. Yep. Yeah. So this would be home for Chappelle when she gets out? Yeah, if she is able to be granted parole, I'm assuming this is where she would have to come and stay. Mm. This compound is where Mercedes and her Balinese family lives, and it's where Chappelle will come if she has to serve out her parole in Indonesia. And I imagine uh, it's a safe location for Chappelle. Yeah, definitely safer than anywhere else. Yeah. Bali had been a favourite destination for both Chappelle and Mercedes. Quick, you've got to be quick, man. It's where Mercedes met and married her husband, Wyan, and where they raised their three children. I got a big one. That's a nice one. But while ever Chappelle remains behind bars, it can never be paradise. Yeah. What impact has this had upon you? <sighs> My life's definitely changed. <laughs> you know, I often dream of just having my old life back, but I know that's never going to happen. So you, as much as Chappelle, must be waiting for the day when she can be a free woman. Yeah. Because essentially you, too, will be free. Yep. Yeah. I, I dream it, I vision it, and yeah, it puts a smile on my face, actually, now knowing it, it, it is closer. We're one step closer. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.